Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Mawlid has three meanings in Arabic. It, 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 it's a, a verbal noun which indicates just a birth. And then it's, it's also a noun of time and a noun of place. So the mawlid is, if you mean a, a place, it's the physical place the Prophet was born. That's called ism makan. And then mawlid is the twelfth of Rabi al awwal, is the time that he was born in. But the mawlid, which is the mustar, the verbal noun, that's just his birth. And that everybody has to celebrate. You can debate about time and place, but everybody has to celebrate the birth. In other words, they have to feel joy that he was born. And, and they should do that every day. I mean, we should have that feeling of joy every day. So celebrating it in the month of Rabi' al-Awwal is something that was introduced in the 7th century. And that's debatable. I, don't, I really don't have a problem with scholars that, that you know, don't agree with that position. And I don't think people should get fanatical about it. But the majority of scholars have always felt it was a good thing because... I mean, if you look, you see, if you have an alarm clock that wakes you up for Fajr, that's a bid'ah. It's an innovation. But if that's what you need to get up for Fajr, then that's what you use. Now, if, if you're living a life in which the qualities of the Prophet ﷺ are absent from it, which is the state of the Muslim Ummah, we don't even have exemplars anymore. We don't have ulama walking around that remind you of the Messenger of God in their character, in their behavior. And so it is good to take time throughout the year. I mean, I think it's good to do it throughout the year, to read the Shama'il, the qualities of the Prophet ﷺ from Imam al-Tirmidhi, to read the Sirah of the Prophet. And it's certainly good for people to get together and hear people that have spent their life studying these things to, to share with us the fruit of a lifetime of reflection, of prayer on the Prophet of, of love of him, and they share it with others because it's infectious. You know, that you might get infected uh, with this desire to learn more. And that's why I think it's, it's a really good thing. But I don't think it should be a point of dis dissension amongst Muslims. I, you know, I really, I'm adamant about that. I just feel that people should do what they're comfortable with. And, and those of us that are comfortable with the proofs that we have and, and the scholars that have uh, given us that, then that's what we do. See, I was reading the other day, I was reading uh, In the Barbary States, which was written by, I think it was an American who was visiting uh, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia. This is turn of the century, 20th century. So it's like 1904 or five. And this is still Ottoman, period. So he said that when he was in Tunisia, he was there for the month of Rabi' al-Awwal. And he described the festivities, mm -hmm. the fact that there were candles lit all through the souk. And he said it was amazing. People put out in their houses lanterns. They spread uh, candy uh, to the children. Like they would walk and they would you know, spread children, the candy for the little children. And then there was all of these gatherings, and he said it went on for days. And that is the way the, the Ummah used to be. I mean, there was a lot of love shown. And the thing is, the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith that Imam al-Tabarani relates, he said, Teach your children three qualities. Khasla is, is a quality that a person has. Teach your children three qualities. The first one, uh, love of your prophet. The first one. The first one. The, and, and the second one is love of his family. And the third is to recite the Quran. He didn't say love of recitation of the Quran because children have a hard time reciting the Quran. Teach them how to do it and then they'll grow to love it. But teach... Now how do you teach somebody to love somebody? Do you see? I mean, how do you do that? Well, there's a number of ways that it can be done. For me, for instance, one of the things that, that I do is I, I have moments of gratitude with my children where I will remind them, isn't it wonderful that the Prophet came to, to teach us how to eat? Look, we, we know how to eat. Isn't it wonderful that the Prophet came to teach us how to pray? You know, he taught us to open our hands like this. You know, isn't that amazing? We wouldn't have known that. Who would have known that to do that? But he taught us how to do that. 
Isn't that wonderful? And then just reminding them of that. You know, I take them on Friday. We go to the Juma, my three older boys. And after we go to have an ice cream. Because I want them to associate Juma with a sweet thing. Like, it's exciting. And so they're looking forward to Friday. And then we talk about the khutbah. So I sit with them and we talk about it. And we talk about the Prophet Sallallahu And then I ask them things. How many children did he have? And then we talk about the children. And what was Ruqayah like? What was Zainab like? What was Umm Kuthum like? What was Ibrahim like? You know? And, and Khadija, our mother Khadija. And, and just doing that. And, and this has to be consistent. You can't just do it once or twice. This is like all the time. So that they are immersed in this sense of everything we have is because of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do you see? I mean, that's how they experience it. Because you have to teach them to love the Prophet. You know, and I, I gave a khutbah last week, and one of the things I said in the khutbah, and my boys were there, all three of them. One of the things I said was that the Sahaba, when arrows were flying on the day of Uhud, they were jumping up to try and stop it from hitting the Prophet So that level of love. You know, that's, that's what you want people to have. That they love the prophet. Because yeah. you, can't, you can't teach that. That comes from... That, that's what a, a parent will do for its child. You see. I mean, when you hear bullets, everybody hits the ground. You have to train Secret Service to go against their nature. But if you hear bullets and your child's there, you're going to run to cover that child if, if you've got any humanity. Why? Because that child is precious to you. More precious than yourself. And that's what they had about the Prophet. He was more precious to them than their own selves. And he said, you have not tasted the sweetness of faith. مَا ذَاقَ حَلَاوَةِ الْإِيمَانِ حَتَّى أَنْتِلْ يَكُونَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ مَا سِوَاهُمَا Until Allah and His Messenger are more beloved to him than uh, his own self. That's the sweetness of faith. And that's when faith is real. Other than that, it's just, it's not real. You know, it's just, I mean, we can have faith, but it's more like a lip service. Do you see? And that's why teaching our children, you know, especially in these lands, like in England and America, when do they, when do they experience it? When do they see, you know, the beauties of Islam? When? And so, you know, to deny the importance of these things is really insane, I think. That's, I mean, that's my opinion.